Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General, good to see you. I appreciated the office call. I want to thank your family sitting behind you. I appreciated your comments about your family's sacrifice. It's really important to remember that. I heard you had to straighten out Captain Smith's tie this morning, so I know as a father and commandant you had a duty to do that. Um, more seriously, you've not only served your country with distinction, you have bled for your country. Not many four-star generals in the U.S. military can say that, so very much appreciate that. General, on April 18th, the Commandant, along with the Secretary of the Navy, the CNO, appeared before this committee, and yet this committee is still waiting for responses to questions for the record. I had 75 QFRs on many of the issues today. Um, these would have been better informed our questions for you today. I understand OSD is still reviewing this, but it is disappointing for anyone watching from OSD that it takes two months to get responses to this committee on critical issues, particularly as we're going through the nomination period of members of the Joint Chiefs. That's not your area, but it's something they need to do a better job on. This morning, I sent a Letter to the Secretary of the Navy, a bipartisan letter. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to submit this for the record. Without objection. 14 U.S. Senators on this committee. That's about two-thirds of the committee. Many of the ranking members and chairmen uh, of the subcommittees on sea power, on readiness. That gives uh, the Secretary of the Navy and the Department of the Navy a clear indication of how this committee feels about the Department's failure to meet the 31 AMFIB ship requirement. You've already spoken about this a lot. You can see the committee cares about it. I commend General Berger for sitting next to the SECNAV two months ago saying 31 amphibs is the requirement. So can you expound again, General, because this is really important, how critical to the Marine Corps' mission is having a minimum of 31 amphibs? There's been a couple stories in the press the last couple months on the 31st MU having the Marines but not the ships to deploy. Maybe you can talk about some real-world examples like Sudan, where we had Marines but not ships to put, potentially save Americans. How critical is it to that mission, and do you fully support, in your personal opinion, the need for 31 amphibs as a minimum? Senator, thank you. Yes, sir. 31 is the minimum, and that 31 is ready, uh, ready ships, able to deploy. The, the, the key... By the way, on that point, the Commandant in testimony uh, last year, I believe, talked about amphibs have a 33 percent readiness rate in terms of maintenance in the fleet. So if you have 31, you divide that by two-thirds and you get the number of ships available. Can you comment on that as well? Senator, I can. Ready ships mean a ship that is ready to receive and train with Marines. Um, as you know, sir, you don't simply deploy. You prepare to deploy for months. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, a, a young Lance Corporal who's uh, operating their amphibious combat vehicle in a, in a wet well at night in three-foot seas, they shouldn't do that the first time on their way to a fight. We have to have those amphibious warships to train with and to not just deploy but to remain deployed. So can the Marine Corps do its global response mission without 31 amphibs, in your personal opinion? No, sir, we cannot. Will Marine Corps force design be a success or failure without 31 amphibs at a minimum, in your personal opinion? So, yes, sir, uh, force design will continue because it will make us more ready to deal with peer threats. But, sir, those 31 amphibious warships are a part of it, an absolute vital part, just as if uh, as long-range fires, low, commu low signature communications are, but those 31 amphibious warships, sir, are vital for the Marine Corps and, more importantly, sir, for the nation. They're a national asset. Just for the record, Mr. Chairman, um, both chairmen, uh, the letter that we submitted, as you know, uh, Chairman Kane, uh, makes it so the Secretary of the Navy two months ago committed to come back to this committee with a plan to get the 31 amphibs and follow the law. That, that's what this letter is asking him to do soon. 
but I think, General, your testimony is helpful in terms of just how important that is to the Marine Corps' overall mission. But to your point, the national security of our nation, do you believe it's broader than just the Marine Corps' mission? Sir, it is my personal and professional opinion it is broader than the Marine Corps. It is a national asset that is the true Swiss Army knife of the nation, and it must be kept forward. It is a national asset. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.